Bop. Okay, we're back now on the internet live. We're on the internet again. That. Yeah. Inf infinitely on the internet. <clears throat> infinitely. Yeah. My uh, my dog. Uh, he likes to alert bark, so he hears like noises outside the door or whatever, and he just barks. It's really annoying. Mm. Um, and so it's it's a process to train him out of that, but you know we're getting there. Yep. So, right. Barking takes a while. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, we have a bunch of news and stuff to talk about, and uh, also the season finale of uh, The Mandalorian. Uh, mm. All right. I have to go make him shout. I'm going to mute on Discord, the correct place to mute. Um, Do that. And then, uh, yeah. Hey, but if you have anything to say, go ahead and talk. Oh, he's already muted. So he went off to deal with the barking dog. And I also know dealing with the barking dog is a very difficult situation. And many people are like, hey, how do I correct my dog's behavior? Um, you shout out them because that is how dogs communicated with each other through all of human history is by being unnecessarily loud and it bothers them to each other. So you, you let them know that the behavior that they're doing is incorrect and it makes you upset because dogs do understand human emotions. So that's the most important thing we need to open. update my status on Discord. How are you doing, dear millions and hundreds of thousands of trillions of viewers? You're doing great because I'm doing okay. I'm tired. I had a long day. But we're here now and I'm... I'm here, just keeping keeping it going, keeping it going, keeping it going all the time, twenty four seven. That's all I know how to do is just to lay lay down the law, bro. Like just the champion of some generic fantasy world. I, there's so many of them out there, but and he's back. <clears throat> yeah. Uh... What's up? Yo, sorry. Um, no, no worries. Just there's put like, like people a... here, so now he's going he's going crazy. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Did you want to push back maybe to tomorrow or something? I can do it tomorrow. Um, no, you know. it should be fine. Um, okay. Anyway, so uh, sorry everyone. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so there's one thing, there's one thing that's kind of been circulating mm. that I don't know. I I don't know if we really want to talk about, simply because it's like inherently political, <laughs> uh, and it's not really like that nerdy i guess um but it involves disney <laughs> which is something we talk about um, a lot, yeah. but but it is it is incredibly political because it has to do with uh florida and ron DeSantis and uh all this shit going on with uh with disneyland and it's actually a pretty complicated issue mm. and so that's why it's like i don't know if we're the best people even necessarily to talk about it um, but, but, you know, you know, we, we, we can, we can, we can, we can have a stab at it essentially. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if you, if you know about any of this stuff. No, yeah. yeah is, you're talking about Disney suing Ron DeSantis, right? Well, that's the big thing that happened today where I'm like, maybe yeah. we should talk about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. It seems just like really like an administrative issue. If anything, like, you know, Ron DeSantis, like you can't bully companies cause they're doing things you don't like. Right. Like that's the inherent well, idea. And like, if just in like Disney has all the special stuff because in the fifties and sixties, Florida was a much different place. And the idea of them getting the largest amusement park in the world was very exciting to them. So that's right. why they handed it, off all the stuff pretty, to them. It's pretty complex. And again, it becomes inherently political, unfortunately. Like, I think we could talk about it without being political. Um, but I think in, in general, people will make it political because, again, it, it is political. <laughs> like, the issues are political issues, I, I guess. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, essentially, more or less, Disney uh, Disneyland was, like, granted its own like governance of Disney land you know Disney World yeah was 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 granted this governance uh, of land in in Florida uh back in like the 60s and um you know Ron DeSantis passed a passed a bill uh, last year well I think it passed officially this year but it was introduced last year uh which was you know it's it's colloquially colloquially referred to as the don't say gay bill which means uh, yeah. essentially public schools in Florida cannot teach kids about gender identity or sexual identity in grades kindergarten through third grade think about that what you will um and people at Disney were not happy about it there were some protests or whatever um and people think 
we don't we don't know, but it you know it's a pretty fair assumption that Ron DeSantis, in retaliation for Disney protesting his bill, uh, has undergone many legal processes to strip Disney of their governing power within the place where Disney World is in Florida. <laughs> and it's been successful. They have stripped them of their power and their governance. Um, but uh, skipping ahead because there's a bunch of other things mixed in with this tangled web. Yeah. And just uh, so everyone's like aware, like power and governance doesn't mean like they have their own little country. It just means that they have like, well, one is like they don't, I think that they don't collect taxes on most food and drink and merch sales inside this park itself, which is huge. It's kind of like it functions kind of like reservation. Uh, but also, much more important is uh, water use. And I believe they just have full blanket water use for anything that they need. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't know if you've been to Disney World before, but there is a lot of water present in the park. I, I so, haven't. I, I've seen pictures though, you know. Yeah, there's uh, fountains everywhere. There's like water is a major theme in the park, you know, because it's kind of supposed to be tropical. That's the idea. Um, and you know, so with full blanket water rights like that, like they don't have to pay for water, <laughs> they can just pump it out of the ground. Um, you know, or probably for what they probably did is just purchased a utility company to do it for them. Right. Um, you know, with that being said now with that, that that's a really squirrely area where like when it starts, the government starts interfering with what you, where you can and can't use water, the park, where the park has already been designed around a certain amount of water. So there's that, that that's a big part of it too. <clears throat> yeah. Water use rights. They're super important in real life for real people. <laughs> is disney real people uh, well according to the united states government a corporation is a single individual so i guess they are <clears throat> yeah um but again you know th that that stuff is kind of th there's more stuff in the weeds regarding all of this um but uh, essentially uh one of the things that happened in the course of this or be before any of this really happened was um disney had a had invested about two billion dollars in the land and in, in, in other things which at the time that they did that they viewed as a safe investment um and as a result of the legal action that ron DeSantis has taken against disney uh they stand to lose that investment and they say essentially that Florida is, will be responsible for repaying it, and they have they have a clause in their contract uh, that says that Florida is responsible for that two million dollar uh, uh, debt, essentially, uh, which will you know if you know anything about government, you know that the, the people of the of those towns will pay that money in taxes uh, or will have to, which is quite a substantial amount. It, it equates to about twenty eight hundred dollars per person. Um. And so th this is all stuff that's been going on for, for about two years now. Uh, in the course of all this and in the back and forth, uh, Ron DeSantis also expanded the the quote-unquote don't say gay bill uh, through, I don't know if it passed, but he's trying to get it through all of high school through 12th grade as well. Through 12th grade? That's so uh, fucking stupid. What about sex ed? <laughs> Well, uh, except if it's kids, it, sex ed, are... sex ed uh, is exception is an exception as well as any anything where you can elect into it. But if you can't elect out of it, then you can't teach it. Okay, um, no, that's yeah. So uh, and again, like we're 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 not here to talk about the the political aspects of that. I mean, every like, everyone's going to have different opinions on whether it's okay or not okay or whatever. Ultimately, I think these are things parents should talk to children about. Um, but there's also deeper things about the understanding of how children's brains work and how they process information at a young age. Um, and, you know, also the whole, uh, unfortunately for, for Republican Governor Ron DeSantis, most Republicans don't or sh ideologically think that government shouldn't invade in our lives uh but uh, uh for some but reason they, they don't actually believe go, that yeah yeah they don't believe it at all <laughs> uh but yeah so uh this the disney is suing disney is suing now uh so essentially the lawsuit was filed in tallahassee uh after a disney world oversight board appointed by desantis voted to void a deal that gave the company authority over design and construction decisions in its sprawling properties in Orlando. Uh, so this is something else where uh, when they had governance of the land, Disney, uh, they, they had their own board, essentially, of uh, their own committee of people 
dedicated to making decisions for their land and everything else. And when Ron DeSantis passed legislation that stripped them of that, uh, he appointed his own board of people who get voted in to, to become this committee. So it's no longer Disney people. It's now these people. But before he did that, Disney had a bunch of things written into, I, I don't know if it was, you know, when they knew this was going to happen or your years ago, I don't know the timeline on that, but they have things written into their contracts that essentially limit the power of anybody else besides them. So the, the people that Ron DeSantis appointed essentially have very little power over what they can actually do. Uh, because of these parts of their, of their whatever. Um, but, uh, here's the quote, uh, from the case, uh, Disney those court, are these documents ratified in a court of law? Uh, which ones? The ones where like, if the group says like, Hey, if someone acquires our land and they uh, assign a new special purpose group, like, is that document like approved in like a court of law, like somewhere where a judge says, yes, you have to do this. If this happens, like, or did they just draft it up and then people are just performing solely based on that? That's very strange. Like it's, uh... <laughs> Let me let me get the exact bit here. Um, so th there's a law that removes Disney's right to self-governance over the 43 square miles that made up Disney World. Uh, DeSantis called Disney's special arrangement an indefensible example of corporate welfare. Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, undo blah blah blah. Uh, so DeSantis's new Disney World board. This was in March of this year. Hints at future controversy. So. The new board met, um, uh, and they're dealing with uh, a bunch of different affairs. Uh, do do do. So a lot of those things call like things were call. They they're calling for better firefighter equipment, uh, lessons on public record uh, requests, and bond ratings. But mm -hmm. the five board members appointed by DeSantis hinted at future controversial controversial actions they may take, including prohibiting COVID-19 restrictions at Disney World. Okay, so this is about them. Mm -hmm. um, the board also approved hiring the same law firm that advised the governor's office and making changes to the governing district to help interpret the new legislation. It doesn't uh, sound like they're very handicapped at all if they're still doing all these things. <laughs> no, that's DeSantis's new board. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you said that like the DeSantis uh, board was like handicapped because of like a clause the Disney people yeah, put in. Yeah, here, here it is. Uh, board members okay. picked by DeSantis to oversee the government of Disney World said that their Disney-controlled predecessors pulled a fast one on them by passing restrictive covenants that stripped the new board of many of its powers. The current supervisors of the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District, which is now what it's called, it used to be something else, uh, said at a meeting that their predecessors last month signed a development agreement with the company that gave Disney maximum developmental power over the theme parks resort, uh, to, resorts 27,000 acres in Central Florida. Under the terms of the agreement, the district is prohibited from using the name Disney or any symbols associated with the theme park without the company's permission, nor can it use the likeness of Mickey Mouse, other Disney characters, or other intellectual property in any manner. The company can sue for damages for any violations, and the agreement is in effect until per uh, perpetuity, according to the declaration. If the agreement is deemed to violate rules against perpetuity, it will be in effect until 21 years after the death of the last survivor of the descendants of King England, of England's King Charles III, the declaration said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, in a statement, Disney said all agreements were above board and took place in public. Yeah. So, well, that sounds like it was, that's copyright stuff. And that's like, you know, of course, like the Florida government can't just start erecting Disney stuff everywhere because they have control of the land. I wouldn't expect them to be able to do that. Even if they didn't well, put that in. <laughs> apparently, uh, <laughs> DeSantis announced a plan to void the move by Disney that effectively strips his oversight board of authority. He says, what they tried to do is an embarrassment. The narrative the left is spinning is that Governor DeSantis was outmaneuvered, but this is far from over, and he's going to have the last laugh. Mm. So, yeah, again, this is all inherently political and dumb, but Disney is suing. <laughs> that's that's what this all comes down to. Disney is suing. Yeah. Uh, in, the, the, in the case, it says, Disney regrets that, has, that it has come to this, but having exhausted efforts to seek a resolution, the company is left with no choice but to file the lawsuit to protect its cast members, guests, and local development partners from a relentless campaign to weaponize government power against Disney in retaliation for expressing a political viewpoint unpopular with certain state officials. Uh, the legal filing is the latest salvo in more than a 
year-long feud between Disney and DeSantis that has engulfed the government, uh, sorry, engulfed the governor in criticism as he prepares to launch an expected presidential bid in the coming months. Uh, just to clarify, Ron DeSantis has not announced his candidacy for president yet, but uh, yeah, everybody he, does expect He's termed out as governor, right? That's it. Like, that's, uh, that's the main thing. Uh, that's what I'm I think so. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Like, it doesn't have anything to do after, so might as well. And, you know, I listen to a lot of, um, like, commentator, political commentators and stuff like that because, like, I'm a, like, you know, like a spectator. Um, you know, like, man, they really are split 50-50 on the uh, right-wing side on this whole DeSantis Trump thing. It's really funny to watch the girls fight. But that's probably too political. <laughs> probably shouldn't talk about that. But, you know. It, it's it's all political. That's that's the problem, right? Like, yeah, you know, any anything, like... <clears throat> again, when when you deal with this stuff, it's really easy to get sidetracked because, it, you know, we could easily just talk for an hour about the quote-unquote don't say gay bill, which, you know, whatever. Uh, we could talk about, uh, g- you know, how businesses operate. Uh, but but ultimately what this comes down to is there's, there's only one loser, right? It doesn't matter who wins this. The loser are the people of Florida because... Yeah if certain things happen in certain ways, taxes will go up for them, which is not a good thing. People go to Florida to avoid taxes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, increased taxes, especially in a, in, in, I know it's a historically a swing state, but it's more red, you know, overall than, than it has been previously. People don't like taxes there. People go there to retire, to avoid taxes, to avoid income tax. But it's uh, nice. Sometimes when there's not sometimes. hurricanes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and if, if all this stuff gets, if it becomes less profitable for Disney to do business there, they'll leave there. And I can promise you that that will hurt Florida and, and, and people in Florida because well, that'll hurt them in an inconceivable way that I don't think any of us can really right. comprehend. Like you suddenly have like how, how many acres do they have? Like 36,000 or whatever the fuck, I mean, you know, they, 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 they had 43 square miles. Yeah, okay, that's 43, and it's all developed out. That's, like, the thing. Like, yeah. if Disney just pulled out, like, you know, you have to understand, the one thing I really don't like about this country and how it interacts with business is that it requires no, like, remediation of, like, rent land use or anything like that unless chemicals are being dumped there. So they can just pack up their shit and leave. <laughs> and well, then it'll just sit there and rot. Like, you know, I'm sure the government can claim it, but then the government's got to send someone in to clean it all up. Yeah, and, so, and not yeah. only that, I mean, one of the one of the biggest sources of income for states like Florida is tourism. Yeah, I, and it's it's the same the same is true here in California. That's why COVID was so devastating for California's budget. I'm sure everybody heard about that during COVID times. Is hey man, we have this huge deficit in California. We were doing so well. Well, it's because we had no tourism here. That's where California makes the majority of its money. Yeah. Um. And so it'd be the same thing. So again, the the, the real loser is always going to be the people of Florida. And it doesn't matter who wins between Disney and Ron DeSantis. So. Uh, you guys can think of this what you will. Uh, you can have your own discussions about his policies. Um, we're not here to tell you how to think and feel about those things. We can tell you how we think and feel, but it's just going to anger other people, I'm sure. Yeah, and so, I think this is all just a bunch of dumb bullshit. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. That, like, you know, I, just, I don't know. The internet, once again, proving that the internet is breaking the brains of humanity every single day. And, like, it's going to come to a head at some point. Like, this being online all the time is just really starting to stress people out i think a little too much and i think oh, it's yeah. just gonna it's gonna come to a head at some point like you know something's gonna happen there's gonna be a spike in i don't know i think suicides most likely and then we're gonna start like i like a really big spike i'm talking like like one we haven't seen before in like human history and that is just gonna keep getting worse i mean we, we definitely have seen some spikes yeah um over the there's last pro- few years but yeah i think it's gonna keep getting worse is like what i'm saying yeah yeah for sure um okay so i can speed run some of this news because uh there's not a whole lot there's really nothing to read uh so cinema con is happening uh it's a big film convention in las vegas um there was some footage revealed there from craven the hunter which is sony's uh upcoming spider-man spinoff dealing with the villain craven the hunter played by aaron taylor johnson um and it's confirmed it's going to be rated r which will be sony's first r-rated marvel film uh we don't know if there's going to be any crossover or anything with marvel which i, I doubt there will be uh, as mm-hmm. far as the mcu goes uh we know rhino will be uh the villain and he will be 
semi comic book accurate, I guess. It sounds like uh, it's like a human who just transforms into a rhino vis a vis uh, Beast Boy, I guess. Mm. Um, I don't know if that's the truth. Uh, there's no footage released to the public. It was only shown there. So, you, you know, reading about it only tells you so much. Mm. Um, but yeah, Craven the Hunter. Uh, I, I mean, is a character I think people like, but again, does he belong in his own film without Spider Man? That that's to be seen uh, if, if they can pull that off. Mm. Um, I mean, you definitely hope that it's not terrible. But th- this is the problem: is like the first Venom movie did well, so now Sony is just gonna mm. assume that like, you know, people like these villain anti-hero spin-off things. Yeah. Right. And I I don't know if that's the truth or not, but that's what they're gonna believe. I mean, Venom two didn't do well, so. Um, yeah well neither did morbius the butt joke of like every like oh god yeah you know like they keep trying and it just keeps not working out like it's it's kind of sad to watch at this point yeah it's it's like i don't know it's like watching someone keep getting into an abusive relationship even though it doesn't work (laughs) doesn't work out that's a weird one that was a weird one um with craven i mean not craven with uh with morbius yeah I don't know what they wish tinkin'. Um, but yeah. So there's that. Uh, there was a Witcher Season 3 teaser. that That's actually been released. It's on YouTube. I didn't watch it. But if you guys are interested, you can go watch it. Um, there was a new Flash trailer that's also been released to the public. You guys can watch that as well. Uh, and the, the, they did show the whole film there. The whole Flash film uh, for some people. And uh, reviews have come out from those people who have seen it. And, uh, I mean, wow. <laughs> uh, I mean, some some are very tame. They're saying, believe the hype. Others go as far to say is it's the greatest superhero movie ever made. What, the new Flash? Yes. Ugh. Um, and, uh, you know, not, I, <sighs> there, there are some inherent problems here. Um, and and they, they have been pointed out. Uh, a, a lot of the reviews mention Ezra Miller, you know, despite his mistakes, uh, he's so, or sorry, they're so good in this. They're amazing. Ezra Miller just shines in the role, um, blah, blah, blah. Like, people waxing lyrical about Ezra Miller, which is fine. Like, I, I don't think that's inherently a problem. The, it, the, the problem will come with what they do, what DC does in the future with him. Uh, I, I don't think we can attack DC for allowing this movie just to come out, especially because of how, you know, it was. it's pretty much done when all these controversies came out. Um, but yeah. at the same time, you know, I, I, I've seen the outrage, the people saying, oh, if, if people treated Ezra Miller's situation like they did Jonathan Majors, this movie would have been canceled, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I, I don't think any of that is necessarily fair. Um, but... Yeah, I, I don't, I, unless Ezra Miller actually can prove he's, ch- sorry, they've changed and they've turned their life around and they're doing better, then it, it's going to take a lot more for people to just believe it, you know, it, aside from all the PR answers from everybody else talking about it. Um, but that, that there have been, that, that there has been that as well uh, from the director. He, he, he talked about Ezra Miller. Um and and the controversies and uh gave a very pr answer which at at this point it's like you know it just sounds like bullshit when you hear it uh because i'm pretty sure it's the same answer that uh what's his face gave uh i feel like we're only gonna get we're only gonna get corporate bullshit amper answers as far as ezra miller is concerned like i feel like that's all we're gonna get because there's no excuse for the behavior like there isn't like you the, eye, the Tolkien iron eye, spider eye, iron eye thing is still going on. You know, they're, they're still petty. They're still pending things like in the works. So it's just all, yeah. it's all fun. I, I think your, your, your mic wire might be loose or something. It's very, like, it, 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 it's like a little staticky. A little oh, bit. is this, uh, how staticky is it? It's just this, like, uh, still... there's like a slow, like a low murmur of like, no, I think maybe my computer fan because it's starting to get hot in here uh, during the summer. That's fair. So, yeah. I gotta. This is why I need to get a new microphone because, like yeah. this, this one's like into. I've had this microphone for like five or six years, but mm. I'm going to Disneyland next week, so I need to save my money. <laughs> fair, <laughs> and fair. I, I signed up for the experience. 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah, so this is what uh, Flash director Andy Muschietti and producer Barbara Muschietti had to say. Uh, yeah. And Andy told the crowd, Ezra is well now. We're all hoping that they get better. <laughs> they're taking the steps to recover. They're dealing with mental health issues, but they're well. We talked to them not too long ago, and they're very committed to getting better. So are they what committed to getting better, or are they are they well? Are they are they better? And has uh, Ezra made any public statements or anything like that? Yeah, no. Uh, Barbara <laughs> Muschietti. Again, all this is is annoying in general because when all the the controversies are going on. DC was like, Hey, you know, we're going to move forward with the movie, but we're not going to promote it anyway. They've heavily promoted this movie at this point. You can't say trailers are not promotion. You can't say showing it at CinemaCon is not promotion. These are clear promotions of the film. So anyway, uh, Barbara said, and I have to say during our shoot, during principal photography, their commitment to the role was something we've never seen. And the discipline to the work, the willingness, physical, mental, and just wanting to go beyond the pale is just amazing. I'm pretty sure that's your job as an actor. But what do I know? Um, oh, so back in August of last year, Miller released an official statement on their public issues and struggles with their mental health. They committed to getting better and offered an apology. This is what they said. Having recently gone through a time of intense crisis, I now understand that I am suffering complex mental issues and have begun ongoing treatment. I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior. I'm committed to doing the necessary work to get back to a healthy, safe, and productive stage in my life. I noticed that they did not apologize to the people that their crimes directly hurt uh just to the people who may be alarmed or upset (laughs) yeah uh but yeah the flash uh the flash will be in theaters june 16th uh and that's uh that's all that's all what it is i guess um do you have any thoughts on any of that i mean not really i've already kind of shared them all and they're not very um you know friendly and it's just they think ezra is a psychopath that's taking it like you know this is just classic hollywood this is what happens like you know they get a big like there's an actor with really dangerous like you know dangerous behaviors then they get a big role then everyone funnels a bunch of money to them and then they use that money and they go do a bunch of other dumb unhinged things that everyone's like oh how could this happen you know it, it, it's 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 just a tale as old as time yeah yeah um <laughs> so uh, the the director of the flash also discussed the reasonings the reasoning behind all the film delays um but to be honest he really didn't explain it uh because because what he says has nothing to do with with anything uh pretty much what he says is uh the only way to release the flash is in theaters uh warners knew that and we knew that uh they expressed their gratitude for the studio's patient the duo explained how the pandemic even helped them fine-tune the product thanks to the extra time uh they said we have worked solidly on the flash for almost four years we are very grateful to wb for working with us on using all the time to make the movie better the pandemic allowed us to have a longer development and on the other side of shooting it allowed us to have the time to explore visual effects like never before we all knew that the flash belongs in movie theaters and we are happy to wait for the right time you cannot say it's because we wanted to wait till it was movie theaters because Ezra Miller was cast in 2014. The movie was supposed to be released in 2018. It has nothing to do with the pandemic and wanting it to be in theaters. In addition to that, the, the film production has been plagued with directorial and screenwriting dropouts from people such as Seth Graham Smith, Rick Fumiyawa, and the duo of John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein, plus the pandemic. Okay, sure, but again, the film has gone through like a bunch of rewrites, people leaving because of creative differences. It has nothing to do with the fact that you wanted it in theaters. It has to do with the fact that DC under Warner Brothers has been dysfunctional for the past decade, and that is why the film has been delayed. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't think any of that bared explanation beyond the, the crazy history of production hell that The Flash was in. Yeah. Uh, because what was it, it announced again? You want to when you want you want to go back to that? What was that announced? <laughs> well, why don't you yeah. go back to why don't you go back to that? No, 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 you know, just to let QR viewers in on how much of a shit show this is in. Uh, Cage, when was uh, when was the Flash announced for uh, for release? Well, Ezra Miller was announced as the Flash in 2014. <laughs> he was set to appear in the Justice League movie in 2017 and his own movie in 2018. 
um, that is that is the history of the announcements. And, and I now remember it's, now it's now it's what I look down here. Uh, you say 2018 was when Ezra Miller was supposed to star in their own movie, which I'm sure mm-hmm. would have been titled The Flash, uh, which is our happening now. Um, I noticed it's said 2018, and I look down and I see 2023. Ah, uh, oh gee, uh, let's see. I see that too. As Hold on. <laughs> I'm, oh, wait, wait. You think it's a five or six year delay? I'm maybe? not. I'm not great at math, but let me uh, <laughs> carry carry the one. Oh, 2023 minus four is 2019, and he's been working on the film for four years. He said. Uh, yeah. So what about the year in between when it was supposed to come out and when come he started out, working yeah. on it? Or the years? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's like there. It's almost like ten years of bullshit. <laughs> The thing is, I, I remember all this so clearly because, uh, you know, I used to do this podcast the called, called uh, Nerdy Boys Reviews. I, st- you know, uh, my, my friend and I we started in 2014. It wasn't a podcast when we started. We did two, two three months of uh, of videos that we posted on YouTube uh, because we didn't know what podcasting was or how to do it. So I recorded uh, on my iPhone four. Uh, nice. vi- videos of us and until I saved a hundred dollars to buy a, a, a video camera uh, nice. which also had shit production quality and um, <laughs> and and the stand was really bad so every time I'd set it up to film us it'd fall over mid recording so we'd have to start all over again um, that was great um, <laughs> and so we did that but then we podcasted and and from from 2015 to, to 2019 we talked about all this shit extensively and how dysfunctional Warner Brothers is in, in the hell of the Flash's production. Uh, so, you know, I, when I read this, I was like, hold on. I remember there being a lot more bullshit surrounding this. Mm. Uh, and hey, what do you know? There was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so some other quick news. Uh, Adam Driver, there's there's crazy rumors are going around that he's the front runner to be cast as Mr. Fantastic in the Fantastic Four movie. Uh, he played a Kylo Ren for people who don't know just by the name. He played Kylo Ren in, in the Star Wars movies. Uh, it's a rumor. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but when many, many different sources start picking up those rumors, they, it's more believable than when it's just a random on Twitter t- tweeting it and then like, uh, you know, other people who just want clicks for, for money. But mm. so there's that. Um James Gunn also replied to somebody. So someone tweeted and asked him if he had any plans for characters like Static Shock or other Milestone slash Elseworlds characters, and he just simply replied yes. So take that for what it is. Uh, Next week is May 4th, Star Wars Day. Carrie Fisher is officially getting a Hollywood Walk of Fame star uh, on Star Wars Day, May 4th, next week. She's dead, so I don't know if she cares, but there you go, Star Wars fans. Um... And uh, Spider-Man is finally on Disney Plus, <laughs> uh, except for the ones done by uh, Marvel. <laughs> yeah. uh, those are coming later, but uh, right now uh, the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield films are available on Disney Plus uh, for the first time. So that's cool. cool. Uh, I know. I never actually watched. Those are like the Amazing Spider-Man, right? That's what they call those. The ones? Amazing Spider-Man is is uh, the two with Andrew Garfield, and then you know the original Spider-Man trilogy is also on there. Yeah, I never watched the ones with Andrew Garfield. So maybe one of these days I'll go uh, come watch. Yeah, uh, the first one is pretty good. Uh, the second one is okay. Uh, th- there's cool scenes. There's really cool scenes, but it's not a great film overall. But I'll let you mm-hmm. uh, watch for yourself. Yeah. Um, so, and then the so the last bit of like quick news without having to read. Uh, Katie Sackoff did a did he, she does a bunch of podcast interviews, and you actually sent me this one too. Uh, where she was talking about people's responses to Bo Katan, uh, no. and, and uh-huh. pretty much saying like the majority of people, you know, are very excited, very happy to see Bo Katan. There's, you know, you have some people who who hate everything about the series. You have other people who hate everything about Bo Katan, and then you have like the three, two, two or three percent of people who want Katie Sackhoff to sit on their face. Uh, it's way higher than two and three percent. Like I, I don't think she actually reads the comments on her stuff, man. I gotta tell you. Yeah. I, well, I, I think she's Especially, aware. I, know, of this I think stuff. I think more specifically, wearing sitting on their face when she's wearing the Bo Katan outfit. <laughs> I mean, even even the you know I don't know if anybody watched uh, the Big Bang Theory. I know a lot of people watched it. It was like number one rated show when it was on TV for years. But uh, you know they even in like the very early you know it's a show about nerds, obviously, and uh, yep. one of them starts dating a girl but uh he doesn't know how to how he feels about her yet and and he's fantasizing about katie sackoff and mm. you know she's in the show and she shows up and she's like naked in a bathtub you don't see anything but you know there's bubbles and she's like mm. yo why are you sitting here fantasizing about me when there's like a real girl in real life that you can go you know be with <laughs> uh but like even then like 
being cast in that role, you know, nerds fantasize about you. Like, obviously, you know, and, and it, it probably started back with Battlestar Galactica, like for most nerds, honestly. So it's not that surprising. Oh, that's right. She was, uh, she was nines, right? What was the name of that? No, was she was, she was Starbuck, but, but yeah. Starbuck. Starbuck. Yeah. That's what I mean. Starbuck. You know what I mean? Like she was like the hardcore pilot and they recasted and it was a guy and then it was a girl. And yeah. I remember so yeah. that that those first seasons of uh, Battlestar Galactica were fucking awesome. I don't know if any of our yeah. viewers have never had the had the chance to watch the first few seasons of Battlestar Galactica. You should. Uh, then they started falling apart because it's very obvious they didn't write an ending, which is again something very super critical. I'm telling you, I'm putting it out there, dear viewer. If you're writing creative project, think well, about the ending first. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> oh my! Like it, it gets those so first, so so good, and then there's a couple episodes where it's just like it's slow. Falling apart. Like yeah. it's just slow. Like yeah. when 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 she's like, I, I don't remember the episode, but it was like uh, when Starbuck was like on this like forest planet and like meets up with like these other randos or whatever. I'm just like, it took me forever to get through that episode. I was like, man, this this shit is so boring. Where where does the good stuff come back? You know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I loved Battlestar Galactica. I loved all all, all the seasons. I don't. Yeah, care. no, the, those first couple of seasons are mad. They're TV magic. That's yeah. all I gotta say. It's brilliant. Uh, okay, so now there's actual news I have to read. Uh, so, oh, first of all, ew. yeah, boo, reading. Uh, uh, so, uh, apparently Al Pacino turned down the role of Han Solo. <laughs> and? <laughs> uh, Who fucking cares? This is, this is news for some reason. Uh, you know it's a slow news week when, when sites like Comic Book Resources just rewrite and recycle old stories they used to tell. I can't tell you the number of times I've seen uh, uh, Christy Carlson Romano, who voiced Kim Kardashian, blew all her money, watched, you know, read how. Yeah, yeah, I've seen this article like a million times over the course of like three years, and it's because you repost it every fucking two days. Like, you know, news is slow when that's all you see, but... uh. Yeah, um, Al Pacino is regarded as one of the greatest actors of all time, but in 1970, uh, he, he was relatively about, unknown in Hollywood. I don't know about that one. Hey, I didn't say that. It's not my opinion. It's what's in Where's the article. Al uh, Pacino wrote this article. It wasn't until 1972 that Pacino received his big break, starring as Michael Corleone in The Godfather, which led to other acclaimed performances in Sir Pico, The Godfather Part Two, and Dog Day Afternoon. By the end of 1975, Pacino was a household name, with many studios wanting to cast the actor in their projects, and one notable role that came his way was a scoundrel by the name of Han Solo. Pacino admitted to the crowd at the 92nd Street Y that because of his growing popularity in the 1970s, job offers came pouring in. As it turns out, one of the scripts he received was for George Lucas's original Star Wars film. However, in a major Hollywood sliding doors moment, Pacino passed on the opportunity. He said, well, I turned down Star Wars. When I first came up, I was the new kid on the block. You know what happens when you first become famous. It gives you give it to Al. They yep. give me Queen Elizabeth to play. Okay, cool. Uh, yep, as we know, Harrison Ford got cast. Um, Al Pacino said, They gave me a script called Star Wars. They offered me so much money. I don't understand it. I read it, so I couldn't do it. I gave Harrison Ford a career. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's all he wanted to say. Yeah. Like, it was mainly like that. The, he, the thing he is, was Har- Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ford would have had a career no matter what you said. Yeah, because he was, he was an American graffiti, right? Like, right. He was, and and yeah. George Lucas you know, probably would have called him back for Indiana Jones anyway. Yeah. Uh, he wouldn't be calling Al Pacino for that, I don't think. But who knows? Yeah, they, all he wanted yeah, to I say like, was... You know, also, I know Harrison Ford's a huge stoner, so now I'm starting to feel like that there's a, this is probably a secret closet stoner too. Which, so, like, you know, because I've seen them, like, you know, looking a little red eyes. I've seen a few pictures of them where they have some red eyes. So I'm just saying, you never know. I know Harrison Ford's smoke weed. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so two last bits from the MCU side of things. More non-stories, to be honest. Uh, oh, there was other non-stories I didn't grab, including uh, that uh, that Scarlett Johansson says she's done with Marvel movies. Yeah, no sure. shit, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, that that didn't need to be news, but uh, this one's regarding Elizabeth Olsen. Pretty much, she said she doesn't have a contract, uh, a new Marvel contract. Uh, which, you know, everyone's like, this doesn't bode well, guys. It doesn't bode well. It doesn't mean shit, okay? It's non-news. I'm not reading it. 
Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and, and in another stunning turn, actress Zoe Zaldana confirms that she's retiring from Marvel after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think anybody necessarily expected to go more to stick around, especially because most people don't expect anybody from Guardians to stick around because they all pretty much said they want no part of Marvel without James Gunn. Yeah. Like, there, there was another bit of news that, that isn't surprising because anybody familiar with what was happening at the time, when James Gunn got fired... Dave Batista straight up came out on Twitter and said, without him, I'm, I'm quitting. Fuck this shit. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Uh, something came out. I don't know who else was there. I know Chris Pratt, and I think it was maybe Zoe. It could have been someone else. H- held a private meeting with Marvel about it. Pretty much saying, without him, we're not going to do the movie. Yeah. Uh, and so this kind of ties, I guess, back a little bit to the Jonathan Major thing in Marvel, not just making a decision. Uh, they're going to hold off on, on announcing a decision, I guess, uh, because they were really, really quick with James Gunn when, when there was at, at only social media backlash. And, and at the time, I was like, yeah, fuck that guy, too, because, you know, I read some of the tweets. They're, they're, they're in very bad taste. Mm. Um, some of the James, Gun- James Gunn's tweets. Yeah, I mean, he, he pretty much was saying like he was attending um, like these these events, which are well known at child predator events yeah um what was he like i think i think there were jokes in bad taste or the american Uh, man boy love association or something like that yeah yeah. Yeah. i'm pretty sure that was it yeah yeah so uh but yeah zoe uh what did what did she even say there's no quote here uh i just remember her saying that she was done with gamora after this i think i just saw that she was done with the gamora after this next step this next movie but i think it's like done for guardians so Yo, this article, like, like okay. saying. Here, here she says, I don't think this is the end for the Guardians. It's the end for me for Gamora. Okay, cool. That's what she says. Wow. Mm. A whole article for that. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty much all the news. Um, but I'm sure there will be more and more stuff to, to, to break us from CinemaCon. Um, but obviously the biggest kind of like controversy has to deal with Ezra Miller. So mm. uh, there's all of that. Um, anyway. We're going to move on. We're going to talk about The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. Season 3 finale. Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, so, we, you know, the finale happened. It happened. It was a thing. Um, I, it was I thought cool. It, I thought it was good. It was a pretty yeah. cool thing. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool, cool. thing. Uh, a lot of action shots. Yep. Mandal- you know, armies of Mandalorians on jetpacks uh, fighting. Uh, find, uh, yep, finding other armies of Mandalorians on jetpacks. Well, they're not Mandalorians. They're actually the Empire, but, you know. Yep, uh, Grogu just being cool as fuck. Uh, Din, you know, doing a little bit of fighting and then getting uh, bailed out by Bo-Katan. Uh, you know, there's lots of stuff that happened. It was it was a good finale. It ended well. Um, you know, all the, by the start. Spoilers if you guys haven't watched it. We're talking about it. We will say spoilers starting from now on because we haven't yet. Um, I guess. Yep. Um, I, I don't think Moff Gideon is dead. Neither do I. Uh, I think he's going to be fused in that suit. Like, he's going to be, like, the first dark trooper that's, like, fused in the suit or whatever. And he's going to be possible, all, like... Yeah. yeah, he's going to be, like, all evil suit with the crown. I don't know. Like, I got to be straight with you. Like, he's kind of a paper tiger, like, as it comes to, like, Star Wars villains, man. Like, he just does a lot of talking and a lot of fish shaking. And then, I don't know. Because I think the actor, he's the guy, he's the same guy who did Gus. And he's channeling a lot of that Gus energy. I, I feel like he could have gotten a little bit more classical. A little, he could have acted it up a little bit more instead of being so rational, you know? Perhaps. And I think that suit is super tacky. The, the armor he's wearing with the crown, I think it's fucking uh, so stupid. It's a little <laughs> odd, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it, 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 it just makes me think of Darth Maul. I guess maybe we should talk about the episode. Uh, my bad. Maybe we should talk about the episode and not like the season. We'll probably review the season uh, later and then share our feelings yeah, on we'll, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. But uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, overall, so, overall it's, it's, a, it's a very good episode. It's very action-packed. Um, yeah basically what happens is because there's not like a whole lot that goes on in this episode it's like you know like they, the the mandalorians are still stuck like you know in mandalore uh that one guy i didn't realize these jet pass could take you all the way up to the fucking to space yeah i didn't that was pretty like you know it's the real plot device this they is a real plot device too. they built it up yeah. as if he was gonna die that motherfucker did not die <laughs> he jumped out the window oh yeah I, no i think when they i, I actually i when they panned away from his ship like fighting those yeah. things and it wasn't actually blowing up i had the feeling that like oh no 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 no, he's gonna come like i had the feeling that okay he's gonna come back later 
because like the music was still playing while he was engaging this big battle. So I knew that like, okay, it's still going to be a thing. He's going to, he's going to come through and save the day or drop the ship or whatever. Um, so like he gets back. So basically like that Mandalorian that like left to fly up, he manages to break through the atmosphere. So I guess the jetpacks are now the ultimate plot device because they could pick and choose like when and when they do run out of fuel and when they have enough power to go somewhere, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just, yeah, like it's re- they're really choosy with what those jetpacks can do. Um, so like, you know, he gets up to the ship and he's like, oh, it's the fucking trick. The empire's coming boys. Let's all load up onto the drop ships and fly down there and beat up the Empire because we're Mandalorians. We're like, oh, hell yeah. So they all hop off the capital sh- cruisers and then they, except for like the guy who flew up there. Um, and he, uh, like, you know, and then they, the Mandalorians get down and like, you know, they start flying off their cool little drop ships. Um, and then this is funny because like as soon as they go down, the thing about the whole Mandalore situation is that there's no sensors that can penetrate like this layer of dust that's above the planet. Um, yeah. So like the, the ships kind of pass each other in the fog almost, but There's they like don't an, realize it's like it. an atmospheric storm that blocks comms. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so so they, like and then like he starts a thing where he's like fuck the empire and like you know the empire is strafing everything looks great by the way the VFX looks awesome you always know it's gonna be a treat when you have that Lucas Arts uh, logo at the first of the film because I noticed that there are some episodes that don't have them and then there are some episodes that do. Um, oh, and I always ones... skip that shit, so I don't know. Uh, there, yeah, there's there's some time there's some episodes of the Mandalorian that don't that don't have the LucasArts logo in the front, hmm. and then there's some episodes that do. And when the ones that do, it's because the CGI is like really, really, really heavy. Because I don't think they use the Marvel <laughs> the Marvel team because it looks really good. Um, and then so this dude on the ship, he starts firing back at the Imperials with like turbo lasers on his own vessel or whatever, and starts fighting off the vessels and ships, and things are exploding. Um, it all looks really cool and badass. Uh, and then we switch down, and then like all the Mandalorians are running away, and then um, the you know the Mandalorians are already on the planet, and then they get contacted by the Mandalorians that are coming in for reinforcements, and they're like, all right, we're gonna go beat up the Empire, and then they all fly off with their jetpacks, and those guys fly off with their jetpacks, and it looks really fucking cool because they're like a giant army of Mandalorians flying in with their jetpacks, and then Bo-Katan is like leading the charge, and she pulls out the dark saber, you know, and she holds out the dark saber in front of her like she's like leading out a cavalry charge, and then they just like you know. All the dark, all the dark troopers on the ground start taking off, and then turns into a big battle. And that battle, like, there's this giant nonstop fight sequence that I think goes on for like 35 minutes. It's pretty much the entire episode. Um, oh yeah. Well, I like, mean, and in the meantime, you have uh, Din Djarin sneaking fight. around. Yeah, he's uh, sneaking around the base, even though they can see where he is at all times. So he's not really sneaking. It's really serious. Yeah. Uh, trying to destroy the he destroys Moff Gideon's clones, and Moff Gideon gets all upset. He's spaghetti. Um, so he sticks the Praetorians on him, and there's like Praetorians from like uh the the newer the, the last Jedi, tri- yeah, yeah, the last the Jedi, red, and- the Red Guard. I actually think these are these are these are Snoke's guards, so I think they look a little bit different. Because I know the the Praetorian guard in the uh, in the original one, like they only had like the staffs, right? And then they had like that cool helmet. I, uh, I, I think I think these are Snoke's personal guards, and I think they're supposed to be alluding more towards the First Order, the coming of the First Order. Yeah, well, definitely, definitely that. Yeah. yeah, and so they're um they're so they're fighting and doing all this stuff. Like you know, you think Baby Yoda's going to get gibbed, um, and he doesn't. So what happens is like uh, the Moff Gideon like beats up Din Djarin for like a few seconds. Well, you also see um they they destroy all his clones too. Yeah, they destroy his clones, and he's trying and he goes on this tangent about how he's trying to uh, put uh, give his clones the ability to use to wield and use the Force like to a super. I'm sure they're trying to even augment it so it's even stronger. Um, so yeah. definitely, you know, that's that that's, that that happened. So he's all miffed and he's like beating up Din Djarin and then. Bo-Katan shows up and they got start fighting and the Praetorian guard that showed up and they beat up Din Djarin at first and then Baby Yoda used his force powers to distract them and ran off into a room and then he's like doing force flips and stuff on the rafters to avoid the Praetorian guard. Yeah. Um, Din Djarin walks in, he lays down the fucking law and he beats the shit out of all those Praetorian guards and they use their force powers and stuff like that and it's all really badass and cool. Uh, the dark saber gets broke which is really fucking stupid. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, he just fucking crushes it, dude. Like it's fucking paper. It's so well, dumb. They, they, two thousand year old saber. You think it'd be like a little crush resistant? You think someone would have thought about that? By now? So I mean, it also just leaves you with questions about yeah. like the convictions of these Mandalorians because we did see how easily swayed they were. Like, oh, she has the dark saber. We have to follow her now. We're gonna believe everything she says. Now that it's gone, are they just like, ah, oh, you're no leader to me? Like, hey, bro, like. Or maybe, I don't know, they formed a battle bond or whatever, and they liked following Bo in, and it was, like, cool and sad stuff. And maybe they're trying to be more peaceful, like, you know, good, happy, lucky, everything is solved all the time, perfect Mandalorians. Um, you know, that's no fun, but whatever. 
Um, so the battle goes on. Eventually, they win. Like you know, they blow up. All, uh, what happens is, is that that guy he hangs his ship. It's coming down like in a giant ball of flames, and he's angling it towards the um, towards the base. And I really like this part where he's like, ang- he's like aiming it and aiming it and aiming it, and then he shoots the window and he flies out. Like I was like, hell yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, I can buy a new ship. <laughs> the captain doesn't need to go down with this one. Yeah. So he he, he ducks it, he ducks out, and it was really. Fu- I actually thought it was kind of funny to be honest, and really, it was very human. I think that's probably the best way to describe it for me. It was like a very human moment. I was like, all right, I'm not going down with this ship. I did my duty. Now I'm heading out of here. Later, suckers. Um, cause, you know, he had the, like the opportunity to save himself, and he took it. And I think that was like just a human thing to put. So yeah. very good writing. <clears throat> yep. And then uh, Grogu Ooh. has his Kanan moment. Uh, yes. So they're all like, uh, the ship is coming in for a crash. Bo Katan and Din Djarin and Grogu can't get away from uh, Mister Evil Lord, Dark Doom, Evil Guy, Moff Gideon. Um, and then the ship crashes right behind him, and he's engulfed in a ball of fire. He's like. Ah! I think he's holding his arms out, and it's actually kind of dumb. It looks really stupid. Yeah. It, kind of, it looks really stupid. Uh, which, again, why this episode is like an 8 out of 10 and not a perfect 10 out of 10. There's a lot, there's yeah. some issues. There's still some problems here. Yeah. Uh, so, But it turns out that, you know, I literally I called it as soon as the fireball went over. I was like, well, did they all, my dad was like, well, did they all die? And I was like, nah, maybe it was probably using the forest to save them. And then, like, yeah. two seconds later, da, 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 like, you know, all the fire's breaking over the forest. And uh, unlike that. Kanan, uh, he, uh, nothing bad happened to any of them. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, like spoilers Kanan. for the Rebels, a series you <laughs> yeah. haven't watched it. Uh, oh, don't worry. The it's most season... heartbreaking moment. Don't worry, season five's coming out soon anyway, so we don't got to worry about it. <laughs> What in Ahsoka? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway. Apparently, uh, Dave Filoni wrote every episode of the Ahsoka series too. So good. Hopefully, it won't be bad. We'll see if that's good. Um. So yeah. So Moff Gideon like has disappeared, and they're all saved, and they're like, okay, well, what do we do now? And then like it cuts to them. What's the first scene? Is them rebuilding so, the Great Forge, right? Yeah. They they ignite the forge, and yep. Bogotan is they, like, haha, we're gonna rebuild Mandalore, and yep. then like, uh, the, then they're like. Oh, here's this. Here's Paz Vizsla's child. Uh, he is now a Mandalorian because his dad sacrificed himself, uh, or something. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> and no, it, like, it was um, that was uh, yeah, that was Paz's kid. But I yeah. think like he was still a few week, like months or something away from the right. So I think they inducted him first in the pool, like you know, the pool of deep water or something yeah, like that, because yeah, yeah. like you know, his dad yeah. was a really hardcore Mandalorian, and I think that kid's little, you know, his name's Ragnar. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a hard little hardcore Mandalorian too. And I don't know. I thought it was cool, like watching the like the water report on the helmet and like the sound effect and everything, like the sound yeah. of the water hitting the helmet. I don't know. It's like cool tradition. Yeah, and then and they and induct then, uh, Grogu. He adopts yeah. Grogu. Yeah, he wants to. He wants Grogu to be uh, in, uh, you know, whatever. And then the the armor is like, well, he can't even talk, so he can't, you know, he can't join take our ranks creed. yet. Yeah, he can't yeah. take the creed. And he's like, well, I want to adopt him as my son. And she's like, all right, you can do that. He will now be Din Grogu. <laughs> great uh they don't right. give him a helmet though very sad yeah <laughs> so uh, i thought they I thought they were gonna bust out that little helmet for him at the last minute and like put it on him it would have been like really dumb uh yeah. oh also his his uh, ig11 armor gets destroyed yep that that happened uh, uh nobody nobody cares uh nobody cares though and that does, definitely doesn't come back and then anyway yeah. the next scene uh, it turns out that IG-11's back. <laughs> so, so I'm pretty yeah. sure it's IG-88's head up there. Yeah, IG-88. Uh, yeah, it's from, IG-88. From Empire. So, um, yeah, so he, he, um, he, basically what happens is that they leave, uh, they leave there after, they leave Mandalore after fixing it and everything like that. And like, you know, like, okay, like, Grogu is adopted to Jin Jar and he's officially Mandalorian now. Uh, the forge, the Great Forge is firing again. Mandalorians are coming yeah, home to Mandalore now, and they're rebuilding. The, well, and like, now that, that Grogu is adopted, like, it, the armor is like okay you guys are like mormons now go on your mission <laughs> or yeah, some he shit take, he has to take your apprentice on his quest or something like yeah. that yeah which is and so they go and they fly off um and then they go to uh it's not jakku what's the name of that fucking generic desert planet <laughs> is it is, is it a desert planet it's not Novaro no it's like a, it's like a, it is Novaro. it is they go to Navarro first remember is it, it's, get... it's, it's a different i don't think it's Navarro. it's it's the one where um where Zeb showed up a couple episodes again. Yeah, they, well, they go to that rebel base, but I can't remember if they go there before or after Navarro. Well, okay, anyway, so they go to the rebel, they go to a rebel base real quick, and the Mandalorian checks in and he says, "Hey, like you know, if you need a gun, I'm your guy." And like the guy's like, "You oh. want to be a mercenary for the New Republic?" 
And he's like, yes, I do, because I'm fucking Mandalorian and I'm fucking yeah. badass. He's like, yeah. all right, no problem. He's like, like the- yeah, he pretty much wants to be a bounty hunter, like under the under the New radar Republic. at the New Republic. But yeah, he did go to he did go to Navarro. Yeah, he goes to Navarro and he meets with the 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 magistrate and stuff like that. And he gets like a little cute little cabin, a cabin, and it turns out that IG88 has been rebuilt. Yeah, they, um, he took he yeah, took IG- the head. Yeah, he took the the memory circuit or whatever from the IG88 head and put it back in IG11 to like rebuild him and he's there he's the new uh warden or whatever sheriff of uh navarro he's a new, sh- he's a new sheriff yeah and so he yeah. was made the new sheriff of navarro everything was great everything is oh, happy also go lucky. in the bar scene where the mandalorian's like hey i want to be a bounty hunter again mm-hmm. uh dave dave he, filoni's just chilling there he's in there yeah, yeah. Uh, i pointed that out as soon as i walked in like oh hey like dave filoni's right there also a helmet from that zombie trooper thing that yeah. i read about that's apparently super badass uh, i i, I want to read that book now i didn't realize how fucking hardcore it was Hmm. um so you check that out one of these days yeah but uh it was a it was a very good episode good, good finale like you said eight out of ten uh unfortunately yep. the season was not an eight out of ten no uh, it was very good yeah, um, there's a lot of boring episodes in there it's just this this is the thing with the with this season that like i've had a few conversations with people about it and this is this is the thing that i observed and that you know i think mostly they agree with is the up they didn't spend time on the right things yeah um there, there were very good episodes within the season but there were episodes where they just they just wasted time and again the the, the first plot line about him needing to get ig11 and it can only be ig11 and then abandoning it and it's r5 i don't care that they brought ig11 back later for grogu to pilot i don't care that r5 came back in the finale to do some shit they abandoned that plot line like it was nothing like I get it, things happened because of that plotline, but that plotline was completely abandoned. He's like, ah, yeah, I, 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 you know, I know you have a lot of droids, Karga, but I'm not, I'm not leaving, I'm not going anywhere without IG11. And then he's just like, ah, fuck it, mm. you know, like it's just, it's just a weird thing. Uh, the episode where they spent five minutes at the beginning dealing with the Mythosaur and five minutes at the end where Bo-Katan takes the Creed essentially and becomes, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, one with her new clan or whatever. Uh, they spent 40 minutes in the middle of that going over this whole Dr. Pershing storyline. Uh, that, that, that was nothing. It was nothing. It was absolutely nothing. Kalia, we don't give a shit about you. You show up one more time to, to tell Moff Gideon something he already fucking knew. Like, yeah. it, it's so pointless. You spend so much time on that. Like, I, I get it. It's important to, uh, to, to lay this foundation of, you know, people, you know, within the New Republic who are still loyal to the Empire, you could have done that in 10 minutes and spend 40 minutes with Bo-Katan and, and, and Mando. Uh, then then you have the episode with the fucking pterodactyl, uh, just so that, you know, Bo-Katan can save the kid. You could have done that in five minutes. You could have progressed stories in other ways. Uh, yeah. And then the Lizzo Jack Black episode, which wasn't bad, but you spent it for character development. Uh, and the only important part about that episode was the last 10 minutes. Yeah. I think all the time, like you could have done the season in four episodes if that was what you wanted to do. Uh, the, yeah. the final two episodes were really good. The first two episodes were pretty good. Uh, the The middle was all just whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Like, there's just a lot of. Uh, there are a lot of. There are a number of issues I think in the season, and I think it's just it's very rudderless. I think that's the sensation I had during the season that they didn't really know what they were building up towards or where they were going. Uh, even less so than the first season where it was kind of like an open-ended thing where it was kind of episodic like you know star trek was um and then you know the only the, first, the only episodes that matter are the first one and the last one essentially and then like you know occasionally in the first episode and the last episode he brings in his friends like you know to help him out and that's like about it um yeah. i mean it definitely uh, there's definitely a build in in a, in a continuation in all these things yeah uh, but but you're right like it's it's more of you know the you know the villain of the week kind of story and it wasn't yeah. until Moff Gideon showed up in in the finale where you're like, oh, okay, there's there's a there's an actual villain to this. It's not yeah. just the the idea of the Empire, right? It's like there's an actual face to that now, yeah. right? Which built through season two as well, but you know, and I I I thought season two was was exceptional despite you know people having issues with the uh, the uh, GS Machina kind of thing. Um, yeah i didn't like season two because again they use it as a launch pad for so many other ip and which like, which they abandoned most of anyway yeah exactly so it was useless and there was no point for doing that and it makes it even <laughs> but 
but I, I, more I, math. I loved it. I didn't care about it and all that. Yeah. But but I, I do think I do think there's there's some appreciation for season three because they didn't do that. You know, right. like they, they did throw in cameos we didn't need, but at the same time, like they didn't they didn't have Luke Skywalker show up. They didn't have Ezra show up in the finale. They didn't have Ahsoka show up in the finale. They could have done all these weird things, right? Like Ahsoka's right. been to Mandalore before. They could have easily just had her show up, be like, "Oh, I heard, you know, I, I heard there were some disturbances or whatever." Like, "Oh, I got a, I got a transmission from the from the ship up there or whatever." Like, they could have found some bullshit way to to take all the power away from Bo and and Din, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can appreciate that they didn't do that here. Yeah. Um, but again, like the, the 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 inherent problems with the season are just the the priorities weren't in the right place, I think. And the amount of time they spent on things that were less important in favor of things that, you know, they, they should have been spent on, uh, mm. I think was a big problem. Yeah, for sure. No doubt about that. You know, let's give a bit of time. And we'll do like a more in-depth season recap later this week because next week i'm gonna be gone i'm being disneyland building a lightsaber that's gonna yeah, be great that'll be fun. didn't do it on, didn't do it on may the 4th because i knew it was gonna be a shit show that day that, and that in star wars land so i just said not to do it that day because yeah. i didn't want to fight for my life i'll be seeing guardians of the galaxy that day and mm. uh return of the jedi the day before that awesome so, bro it'll yeah. be good it'll be a good time yeah but, is there anything uh, else to cover no i think that's it um but Everyone, please, you know, like up the things, subscribe to the things, click the buttons, please rate, review. Uh, appreciate any new listeners, returning listeners, uh, people who watch the stream, people who listen to the audio version. Much love. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.